everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Caitlin Rose and I now upload three times a week on a Sunday. It alternates between a mystery video or Unsolved Sunday, which is today, and that alternates with a beauty, fashion, lifestyle video. Every Wednesday is a beauty, fashion, and lifestyle video. And then now every Friday, I upload my weekly uni vlogs on this channel because I'm just basically calling it. I'm condensing both my channels into one place. Weekly vlogs up every Friday on this channel from now and obviously at the moment they are vlogmas. So today is a mystery video, uh, it's an Unsolved Sunday video and I'm talking about a very, very, very strange case. This actually baffled me, I've watched a uh, number of videos on them, I've read a lot about this case because it is just so baffling to me. Yeah, today we're going to be talking about the uh, what was very, very strange like case or disappearance or just everything of Lisanne Froon and Chris Kremers, I'm so, or Chris Kremers, I'm sorry if I mispronounce any names. As always, I am useless at pronouncing things. So yes, if you want to hear a little bit about the case, then keep on watching and we shall just get started. So Lisanne Froon and Chris Kremers were two Dutch women and in March 2014 they had planned to go on a trip away uh, there was a number of reasons for their trip away. One, it was kind of like a reward for them. After they'd graduated and they'd worked, I think, for the six months leading up to the trip, it was kind of like a reward for them. And they'd also wanted to go just for a number of things that would actually help them in the future. So on this particular trip, they planned to go to Panama. One of their reasons was that they wanted to go to better improve and or just to learn Spanish, so just to improve their knowledge of the Spanish language. And also they wanted to go and volunteer to work with children and basically just sort of better themselves and things like that. So this trip to Panama was in March 2014 and it was a six week long trip. For the first two weeks of this six week trip, they kind of just did their own thing. They saw the city, they looked around, they just had like a typical holiday vacation trip where they just took photos and did the usual touristy things. I forgot to mention that they started their trip on the 15th of March 2014. So this was where the start of the journey was. And then, like I said, for the first two weeks, they did their own thing. And then the four weeks after that, they had planned to stay with a host family in their home. This host family lived in a town called, I think it's Boquette or Boquette. And like I said, this host family, basically they just invited them to stay in their home. They had their own room and they slept there well, the plan was to stay there for four weeks in this town because they were then going to go on a number of trails like a hike to just see the local area so on the 1st of april they decided to just the two of them go on a hike um this initially just quick like initial red flag they went on this hike on the 1st of april but they had planned to meet an experienced tour guide to take them on this particular hike on april 2nd the day after at 8 a.m so this in itself is very weird. Obviously, I know it's quite early on to already be saying something weird, but it was very strange that they decided to go on this hike a day before they planned to meet their experienced tour guide to go on this hike. No one knew why, they just, they figured out this entire case, you will notice, there is no explanation for why they decided to go on this day, and that is kind of where things kicked off. So on the 1st of April, they left the host family's home at 11 a.m., and they were seen having lunch with two Dutch men. These Dutch men, it appeared that they were familiar, there were photos of the four of them, they'd gone to the beach together, like earlier on in the journey they'd partied together, they'd done a lot together, so they'd obviously, I'm assuming, met sort of earlier on in the holiday and they've done a lot together, so they already knew each other, they had lunch on April 1st and then after lunch the two girls set off on their hike. When they set off they were heading to a clouded forest, so just like a rainforest type situation. Their aim was to go to Baru Volcano, which wasn't too far from where they were staying at this host family's home. So it wasn't too much of a difficult hike. It wasn't like you had to be super experienced to go on this hike. Uh, apparently it's super easy to follow the trails. And yeah, I think there are some photos if I can find them, put them on the screen of them, their whereabouts. And yeah, their plan was to go up to visit Baru Volcano. They actually took a dog with them. His name was Blue and he was the dog that belonged to the host family they were staying with. What's strange about this, later on that day on April the 1st, obviously they took Blue with them on this hike. Blue returned home later on in the evening alone. He didn't bring the girls back and obviously this was a huge red flag. This brought major concern to the host family but obviously it's quite a difficult situation with the host family because 
they're not their parents so they couldn't put restrictions on them they couldn't say oh, oh they had to be home by 11 so obviously they didn't know initially they were missing they contacted Lisanne's mother who just basically to ask if they if she'd heard from either of the girls to make sure they were okay because obviously their dog had returned home without the two girls but they weren't sure obviously you know they could have been they could have decided to go out somewhere before returning home they could have come back or something could have happened and it would not be drastic so they didn't want to assume the worst Lisanne's mum sent her a text and didn't get a reply but obviously like I said it's hard because they couldn't put restrictions on the girls they didn't want to assume things they were concerned at first but they couldn't do anything yet before they were sure they were missing so like I said the girls had planned to meet their tour guide his name is Felic Feliciano I think is how you pronounce it on April the 2nd at 8 a.m so it was when they didn't show up for this meeting with the tour guide that he was then concerned because obviously they'd had this planned he then went to the host family to see if anything was up, saw, you know, everything was fine there, all the stuff was there, thought it was really weird. He then himself contacted Lisanne's mum, who, all she replied to him was that they are in Panama. And obviously, he's an experienced tour guide, so he then went, oh god, like, we don't know where in Panama. So this was when they realised that they hadn't heard from them, they didn't know where they were, and they contacted the police. On April the 3rd, the next day after the police were contacted, a very small search party, it was just sort of local law enforcement and uh, people indigenous to the area, they were kind of the main people that went out on the search party looking in the uh, in the forest area because it's such a dense forest area and it's you have to be quite experienced, you have to know the area to actually do a thorough search. So they trusted the indigenous people a lot throughout this investigation. Uh, obviously they were probably supervising things, but they were very, very helpful and they aided a lot of the investigation because obviously they knew the area within the forest a lot better. In the search party on April the 3rd they found absolutely nothing that suggested the whereabouts whether they, they were lost in the forest or whether they'd gotten out or anything there was absolutely nothing found on this search on this day in the search party. On the 6th of April both of the girls families flew into Panama and um, as well as a bunch of Dutch sort of special investigators, uh, detectives, crime scene specialists. The investigation well, their search went on for 10 days. They, they had sniffer dogs. They wanted to do like an extremely thorough thorough search of the area. Um, as obviously, like I said, the previous search part was quite small because they didn't really know what happened. So they did, they conducted a more thorough one with sniffer dogs for 10 days, but they still found absolutely nothing. So it wasn't until 10 weeks later on June the 14th, 2014, that a couple who were indigenous to the area, they actually came across a blue backpack which later found out to be Lisanne's or belong to Lisanne. It was sort of, it wasn't, too, it was quite a while away. Uh, it wasn't on the trail but it was still within the general area of the trail, it wasn't too far so it wasn't sort of initially strange. But what was very strange about it was that the backpack itself and all of the belongings in it, so I have a list of everything that was in it, uh, there was $83 in cash, Lisanne's passport, both the girls' phones, Lisanne's camera, two bikinis, two pairs of sunglasses and one water bottle. And that was everything they'd set out with, so nothing was missing, nothing was damaged. But what was very strange is that the woman who found the backpack said that where it was found is kind of on her like regular trail, like she goes there a lot because she's indigenous to the area. And it definitely she was 100% sure that it was not there the day before when she passed through. and. The backpack and everything within it, despite all of the heavy rainfall, everything to do with the local area, the weather, everything, it seemed untouched, it was undamaged, nothing was wrong with it, so that was very, very strange. Because obviously you'd think maybe it'd get soggy, the rain would damage it, it was just very strange at how untouched it was. And also you have to remember that this was 10 weeks after the investigation was first launched, so considering nothing was touched but it had just been placed there the day after this woman had already passed through this area is very very strange. So when investigators found this backpack and got hold of their phones, their, the first thing they did obviously was to look through their phones and they'd found that there were a number of calls on a number of days from made from Lisanne's phone trying to contact emergency services. Obviously because of the area they were in it was most likely they just couldn't get enough service. First call made from Lisanne's phone was placed only just a few hours after they left on April 1st for their hike. And because of the service, obviously it appeared that none of them went through 
only one call at the number of calls they made only one of them actually connected on the other end but it only connected for like less than a second so it was evident that they tried multiple times very early on contact emergency services but none of them they couldn't get through so Lisanne's phone had been the one doing most of the calls and her phone died at 5 p.m on april the 5th while chris's phone it was turned on and off multiple times obviously presumably in order to have like to save battery on at least one of their phones on the 6th of april chris's phone was turned on and the passcode was entered loads of times incorrectly so it was evident that it wasn't chris that was trying to get into her phone um obviously you don't know we don't know definitely for, for sure who was trying to get into her phone but because of the amount of times they incorrectly entered the password we know it wasn't her and they couldn't get access to her phone no matter how many times they tried the last time chris's phone was turned on was at 10 51 on the 11th of april and an hour later it was turned off like i said they couldn't get access to the phone so that was the last time it was turned on and off which is very i mean it's very strange in itself if it was one of the girls um to for them to have survived till the 11th of april so 10 days after they went missing it's quite impressive with the provisions they had but i'll talk a little bit more about that later on when we discuss all of the facts so the next strange element very quite strange element of this case was um the camera lisanne's camera that had been found inside the backpack so there were loads of photos obviously from earlier on in their trip um with the guys there's loads basically just a typical touristy camera but there weren't around 90 photos that were found to have been taken on april the 8th so during this time that they were missing um between the hours of 1 a.m and 4 a.m they were all flash photography cameras uh fl flash photographs sorry and there is no explanation as to what the girls were trying to show in these photos so one theory is that they had been using the flash on the camera to light their way it was uh, you can tell that it was night time it was really dark when they were taking the photos obviously they were using flash so some people say that they could have been using the flash to light their way to see where they were going while they were still walking in the night time however then it is then disputed that when you take a flash photo in pure darkness so it would have been pitch black at that time it actually kind of sort of temporarily blinds you in a way your eyes have to readjust i don't know if you've ever done that but the flash your eyes don't really adjust so it wouldn't have actually aided them they wouldn't have been able to see anything so that wouldn't have helped them find their way for any reason so in all likelihood that isn't why they were doing it so then some people suggest that they could have been using the flash on the camera to ward off to scare off animals or anything like bugs whatever in the woods at night which is obviously quite fathomable but obviously there we have no evidence to sort of s support that so another theory that kind of explains what the, some people think the reason behind these photos was was that there was some sort of pattern or sequence within the photos that the girls somehow thought would help the people that found these cameras to find where they are so for example it would be a close-up shot like a close-up photo then one pointing upwards then one point in a different direction and then it would keep going like that so it was like a sequence um there is no explanation as to what the sequence is or if there is, is even a sequence but some people do support that they could have been using their own sort of hints to help investigators later find where they are or what happened to them so some reports say that apparently in just one of the 90 photos you can see part of chris and you can quite clearly see that she had an injury to her temple on her head so there again there's no explanation but apparently that is just the only sort of deductible thing in one of these 90 photos so obviously in this case the first thing that was found was the backpack and then investigators obviously in focused their their searches on the surrounding areas around this backpack to suggest any sort of like trial journey sort of thing to in hopes of finding anything basically because they had nothing apart from this quite nearby to where the backpack was found they found chris's shorts strangely neatly folded on top of a rock again absolutely no explanation for this whatsoever continuing on with the searches two months later they found a boot and inside the boot was a whole human foot in a sock inside the boot and kind of near to this was a pelvic bone searches were then continued and eventually in total 33 bones were found 
28 of these belonged to Lisanne and they belonged, I think they were part of her left foot and the rest were Chris's and the pelvic bone was Chris's. Another factor in this case that was extremely strange was that all of the bones that had belonged to Lisanne had pieces of flesh still attached to them, whereas Chris's had none. They were clean bones and they were actually bleached, which is so strange. So the bleach, the bleach bones, they were bleached by phosphorus or limes, so um, there are a number of different explanations to why this can be done. It is possible to have been done naturally, however, they investigated the surrounding areas, the soil and everything, and there was no trace of phosphorus in the soils and nothing that could have bleached them in this way. So that is completely baffling as to how her bones were bleached and clean in a way. As well as this, these bones were found in an area that wasn't particularly populated whatsoever and it, there is no sensible explanation as to how the girls would have ended up there. They hadn't set out to do this long journey, they'd set out with no food, one bottle of water, so it was obviously supposed to be just a quick hike and there was no explanation as to how they would have ended up in this place that was about a day's journey away from where they started. So again, no explanation whatsoever there. So in summary, these bones that, that were found, I think they were found by indigenous people because obviously, like I said, they're a lot more experienced in the areas. Um, it tells investigators, or it told the investigators that at least one of the girls, so believably Chris, uh, had died in the forest. Another point that I would just like to add is that there was no sign of animal foraging. There was no signs of any sort of animal attack um, on the bones. So it couldn't have been that like the flesh on just Chris's bones were ripped off because the animal had gotten to them, not the sand's bones. There was no evidence of animal inclusion whatsoever. So back to the bleaching of, of Chris's bones. Um, one of the biggest theories in relation to this is links to cartels, in particular Mexican cartels. Apparently it's quite a well-known method used by cartels as a means of destroying evidence. They use limes as a way of speeding up the, the decaying, sorry I forgot the word then, the decay process as a way of destroying evidence. So some people believe that there is evidence either of cartels involvement, which is a far stretch in my opinion, or just that there was definitively someone who attacked them and used this method to bleach Chris's bones because there was some form of evidence on her bones that would have tied them to it. So some people believe that, that you know, there was someone else involved, there was another party involved and they used this method as a way of protecting themselves. But the big question around this, if there was a third party attacker involved, is what could have possibly happened to one of the girls that wouldn't then have happened to the other one because they were both together. So it's very, very unlikely that one of the girls had evidence on them that the other one didn't have. So what would have happened to Chris that Lisanne wouldn't have suffered as well? That is the big question around this main theory. Police uh, actually wouldn't release the autopsies of the girl's bones so this is why another like it's another supporting factor that a lot of people think links with this cartel theory because you know cover-ups and things but again I personally think it's a bit of a far stretch. And obviously a final note they looked into the host family if any of you are wondering about that obviously they looked into the host family and nothing came of it and I think similarly to the two Dutch guys that they've been partying with nothing came of that as well so that is literally all the information that could be found on Lisanne and Chris. This is a very, very, very creepy uh, case, obviously, as you guys probably tell, and I'm sure you all have your sort of suspicions and theories. My personal opinion, obviously I could be wrong, but just from what I've read, uh, things that I could find, I personally think it was most likely the result of the conditions that they were in. So in all likelihood, it, it isn't probably the most common cause of death in hikers that they've wandered off from the trail as much as it was allegedly very easy to stay on the trail like they were easy to follow but a lot of the time in these cases because of the area and the unknown surroundings if you wander off even slightly you get completely lost so I do personally think it, in all likelihood they got lost and because they hadn't prepared they didn't have enough provisions to keep them alive for that long they tried the best they can to survive and unfortunately they didn't make it out. One of the, There is a mention of a theory to do with a bridge that they were photographed on like earlier on at some point in the hike. It was a monkey bridge so it was all rope and basically it's kind of search it up if you want a little bit more about it but there's a photo if I can, again if I can find it I'll put it on the screen and um, 
yeah, basically it's a bridge. I'm sorry, I'm really stuttering at the moment. So someone suggested that, uh, well, again, this is touched in a lot of people, a lot of people have mentioned this, but it was suggested by someone that where this bridge was or whether it was the same one or a different one, it is possible that perhaps one of them had fallen and, you know, unfortunately died. And the other one, so Chris had fallen around this area of a bridge, like the monkey bridge sort of situation in the night. And Chris had used the flash photography camera to make sure she didn't make the same mistakes so she didn't fall. Um, because apparently in one of the photos it can be clear, like made out in the background that there's a monkey bridge. And that would explain why Chris's belongings were in Lisanne's backpack. So her phone, her sunglasses, everything like that was in Lisanne's backpack and not on Chris. So that is one thing that potentially links them. And I do think that is probably quite, uh, quite a believable theory. It happens unfortunately but obviously you can sanely make any sort of assumptions about most elements of this case so like i said the conditions could have killed them but then elements such as the bleached bones and the location of the bones and how the bones were actually spread apart they weren't all found initially together they were quite a little bit of distance away there, that isn't explained, you can't explain that and also just why they were there in the first place why they left a the day before their tour guide why any of that why were they there i uh, there's just certain elements of this case that make it so creepy and so absolutely awful and just baffling so let me know down below what you guys think um again i'll try and link anything if i remember that may be updated uh, also let me know just leave in the comments if there's any updated or if you guys have a theory if you've read anything i know there's quite a few interesting theories on reddit and things so yeah let me know down below what you think and if there are any cases you want me to discuss in the future Thank you so much for watching and uh, I hope you found it interesting and I'll see you guys soon for another video. Bye!